Hi everyone, I'm Josh Perry. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about a new project uh, we're working on at HP called OpenStack Q. And uh, I want to talk a little about what we're trying to solve with Q and what we're not trying to solve. So first, a little bit to describe what we're doing with Q. Uh, we're trying to make it very easy for app dev teams to spin up uh, messaging capabilities within their private clouds in a public cloud environment and uh, do all the lifecycle management functions around the, the message brokers that uh, applications are leveraging today and you know greenfield applications that uh, companies are building uh, for the future. So one of the questions we get asked a lot being on the Q team is how does this relate to another OpenStack project called Zakar? Zakar is uh, very good at implementing the full stack of, of a messaging solution. So they're writing uh, a backend with Mongo, they're writing all the way up to the API la layer. We're not trying to solve messaging in the same way that Zakar is uh, trying to solve the messaging problem. We're trying to leverage what's out there. What we find in a lot of our customers is they've got RabbitMQ, they've got ZeroMQ, they've got a lot of other messaging technologies uh, already in their enterprise, but they spend a lot of time patching, scaling, tuning those brokers. So with Q, we're trying to make that very easy. And at the end of the day, it comes down to uh, you're in IT, you're supporting your app dev teams, where do you want to spend your time? Do you want to, do you want to have a bunch of sort of uh, sprawl, a bunch of different message brokering, message brokering technologies uh, out in your enterprise, having to support, patch, maintain those, or do you want to provide you know, programmatic infrastructure for your dev teams that need to distribute parts of their application or build services that intercommunicate with each other uh, using a technology that they're already familiar with? The nice thing about most of the brokers out in the market today, they've already got decent clients. Uh, Rabbit itself has uh, a number of clients in you know, all the popular languages that uh, dev teams are used to working with. And so we're starting with RabbitMQ. Uh, a lot of our code's you know, already out in uh, StackForge, and we very much are interested in other contributors. So, uh, to talk a little bit about capabilities, uh, not all these things are in the product today, but this is you know, a glimpse at what we're working on. So we wrap RabbitMQ, we make it easy to deploy RabbitMQ. Uh, you can bind your application, whether it's running on a VM or running as a Cloud Foundry service, uh, to this broker that, that Q provisions. Uh, we want to move beyond just provisioning, right? We want to make it very easy to scale out RabbitMQ and other message brokers. We want to make it very easy to do rolling upgrades of a RabbitMQ cluster so the app you know, writing to the, the queue is not affected when you need to patch or upgrade Rabbit. A uh, couple other things we're working on, making it more pluggable. Uh, just last week, got a call from another vendor in the messaging space. They're interested in contributing this project and they want to plug in their proprietary back into the queue framework and you know, join the OpenStack ecosystem. Uh, so we're very excited you know, about other companies coming in and joining and contributing uh, back ends to the queue project. One of the other things uh, to note, yesterday there was the Operator Summit. Uh, there was a lot of talk about tuning RabbitMQ. Uh, we want to make it uh, program program programmatic uh, to deploy a configuration to a backend like Rabbit and maybe have different settings for all those different brokers. And th this is something uh, you'll see a lot in the Trove pattern where they've got different configuration parameters for uh, all the data stores that Trove supports. Q, Q is very much like Trove if you're trying to think of an analogous project in OpenStack. A little bit on the architecture for Trove. So it looks very similar to OpenStack in some ways, and then it's got a few new components uh, that are different than things like Trove. Uh, we use Zookeeper and TaskFlow, which is unique to Trove, or which is unique to OpenStack. Um, Trove, on the other hand, just uses a, a few other components like Apache and a Glare backend, which we also use in, in Q. Uh, but please check out our open source uh, documentation. We are on Read the Docs. We've got an IRC meeting every week, and we have a Vagrant box that makes it very easy to get uh, queue up and running uh, for a dev machine. And we're always working on improving the documentation. Um, please reach out in a mailing list or you know, in IRC. And then that's my Twitter handle. Um, one thing I'd, I'd encourage uh, anyone you know, watching this talk to do is just go out, spin up Vagrant, Play around with the API, it looks very similar. You know, there's a CLI that's bound to the OpenStack CLI. So it's very easy to do something like, you know, OpenStack, Q, uh, create cluster, and you get a RabbitMQ instance up and running, which you can then, you know, bind your applications to going forward. So with that, please check out Q, and that's it.